Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're exploring a gripping Korean sci-fi thriller, The Silent Sea, released in 2021 and directed by Choi Hang Yong. The story unfolds in 2075 as Earth's ecological environment rapidly deteriorates. The annual average rainfall continues to decline, leading to a consistent drop in sea levels and affecting drinking water sources worldwide. Desalination plants are at total capacity, forcing people to consume contaminated water sources, leading to a surge in infectious diseases. According to government forecasts, water resources are expected to decrease by 40% within the next decade. In response, humanity begins searching for water sources in space, but to no avail. The government established a water rationing system to manage scarce water resources, and individuals with higher personal rankings received more purified water. This policy sparked widespread discontent among the public, who demanded equal water distribution. Amidst this crisis, Mr. Kim from the Space Agency rushes to the Institute for Environmental Survival to seek out Miss Song, a talented astrobiologist who has become an animal behavior expert. Miss Song, known for her brilliant mind and exceptional memory, vividly remembers the color of his glasses frame from five years ago. Mr. Kim's visit is to invite Miss Song to join a critical mission to the Bohai base on the moon. Initially reluctant, Miss Song's interest is piqued when she learns the mission's destination. Five years prior, her sister and all their teammates tragically died at Bohai base, and so, as compensation, the chief director gave Miss Song a privilege card, ensuring she wouldn't have to worry about water for the rest of her life. After a radiation leak, the government decides to close the base permanently. The team's task is to retrieve samples left at the base before it shuts down, with only 24 hours on the moon to do so. Mr. Kim emphasizes that the sample must be transported under stable, low-temperature conditions without errors. Captain Han leads the mission. Miss Song handles tasks related to the sample, and Mr. Huang, an early base member, joins as a consultant for this mission. Shortly after, the team arrived at the launch site, poised for departure. Curiously, the co-pilot was replaced at the last minute with someone who seemed oddly relaxed, casually handing Miss Song a bag of candy. Five minutes later, the rocket ascended, leaving the doomed planet behind. Not long after, the spacecraft reached lunar orbit. Impacted by a meteor shower, Communication with the space agency was severed for two hours, forcing the team to wait for communication restoration before entering the landing orbit. However, soon after, severe shaking occurred outside the spacecraft, compromising the stability of the landing module's fixtures. With 20 minutes left until communication could be restored, the situation worsened. Continued shaking threatened to ruin the landing module's engine. At a critical moment, the captain decided to detach the landing module from the rocket. Unfortunately, the module's engine failed to ignite, and the crew had to brace for impact, securely fastening their seatbelts. The landing module came to rest in a precarious position, dangling over a cliff and slowly slipping. Just then, a box fell from above, smashing the cabin's glass and causing a fierce rush of air to escape. Miss Song was unlucky enough to fall out. Fortunately, Captain Han quickly intervened, managing to save her. The satellite communication systems were destroyed, and all contact with the space agency was lost. Now isolated, they faced a 7-kilometer trek to Bohai Base, making the 24-hour mission timeline seem daunting. Meanwhile, the landing module fell to the bottom of the cliff. Mr. Huang, the only team member familiar with the base, broke his ribs during the landing and died shortly after, due to his labored breathing. There was no time for mourning. To stay on schedule, the team had to leave Mr. Huang's body behind. They ran towards the base, arriving just as their oxygen supplies were nearly depleted, and successfully opened the rust-covered doors. Immediately, they recharged the life support system and adjusted the base's environment to Earth's gravity. They hadn't gotten far when they stumbled upon the body of a mercenary bizarrely covered in a mucus-like substance, suggesting he had drowned, a puzzling discovery in the arid lunar base. Mr. Kim had mentioned a radiation leak before their departure, yet everything seemed normal. If the space agency's information was unreliable, 
what caused the base crew's demise five years ago remained a mystery. Miss Song suggested performing an autopsy on the body to uncover the truth behind the strange occurrences. However, Captain Han insisted on prioritizing their mission. Once they reached the control room, they rebooted the power systems, bringing Bohai Base back online. Yet they couldn't establish contact with the space agency. Fortunately, the base's internal environment was in good condition, allowing them to remove their cumbersome helmets. They then activated the air purification system, further cleansing the base's atmosphere, which eased everyone's tensions. Upon reviewing the base's layout, they noted the red zones that required level 1 clearance but lacked specific details. Perhaps even previous base members didn't know what was inside. Intriguingly, these areas overlapped with the previously reported contamination zones by the space agency. Could this be a coincidence? Using her exceptional memory, Miss Song successfully found the route to the storage rooms. Captain Han split the team to expedite their search for the samples. He instructed them to immediately check the temperature control devices upon finding samples. If the indicator showed red, they were not to touch it and should contact Miss Song immediately. Su Chan informed Miss Song that each base member had been implanted with a chip in advance, which she hoped to use with the central control system to identify the bodies and their locations. It was clear she wanted to find her sister's remains, but the chip identification function was temporarily inoperable due to the system's disrepair. However, she didn't mention anything about her sister to Su Chan. The team urgently split up to search for samples. While searching, some members discovered strange patterns, while Miss Song found a mysterious passage. Captain Han's group pried open a sealed door, revealing the bodies of base members behind it. Analysis suggested they had struggled violently before death, as if trying to escape. However, the space agency's report claimed all had died before the area was sealed. The scene indicated they all drowned. An increasingly perplexing turn of events. Shortly after, two sub-teams opened the doors to storage rooms 1 and 2, finding signs of previous searches, but no intact samples. Meanwhile, Miss Song's group reached storage room 3 when they unexpectedly detected a signal of an unknown life form. Could there still be other survivors in the base? At that moment, Li Ji persuaded Miss Song to head to the control room to attempt to reactivate the chip identity function. Without hesitation, Miss Song sprinted toward the central control room, unaware of Li Ji's hidden agenda. Meanwhile, Su Chan accidentally disturbed a body, causing a fine powder to burst into his eyes. Alone, Li Ji opened storage room 3. As he bent down to retrieve a dropped flashlight, an unknown creature subtly moved it. Su Chan began to experience disorientation, followed by a mysterious stream of clear water flowing from his ears. At the same time, Miss Song arrived at the medical bay, only to find the door tightly sealed with traces of blood in the door cracks. Just then, a teammate informed her of Li Ji's unexpected disappearance. And when he reached the location indicated by the unknown life form signal, he found it was incorrect. He advised Miss Song to find and stick with Li Gi and not to proceed alone. Reluctantly, Miss Song headed back while Li Ji had ventured into a storage room alone, where he surprisingly found an intact sample. Miss Song arrived just in time to witness a horrifying scene. Li Gi was suddenly attacked and killed by an unidentified creature. Dr. Hong's examination of the body revealed multiple fractures, questioning that even a fall from the ceiling could not have caused such severe injuries. Li Gai's mysterious death and Miss Song's unauthorized departure led the team to suspect her. The captain immediately reviewed Miss Song's recorder, which showed a dark figure taking the sample from Li Jie's hands. The team later found a ventilation shaft behind a cabinet, which seemed to be the escape route for the creature, suggesting it had cognitive abilities, or possibly it is even human. Yet, why it didn't attack Miss Song remained a mystery. Following La Ji's unexpected death, the team grew increasingly anxious. With Su Chan sitting quietly aside, sensing something was off, a team member approached and witnessed a bizarre scene. Large quantities of water sprayed out of Su Chan's mouth. Upon receiving the news, Captain Han and others rushed over. 
Dr. Hong urged everyone to don protective gear and attempted to save Su Chan, but it was too late. His body was completely saturated with water, so even the blood drawn turned clear. Three team members had now died, leaving everyone bewildered. Captain Han tried to comfort the team while assigning tasks. Dr. Hong and Miss Song were tasked with performing autopsies to determine the cause of death. Captain Han led a few members to track the unknown creature. Venturing into the ventilation ducts, they found strange symbols inside, but soon reached a sealed gate that only levels one member could open, and no one knew what lay beyond. They had to return to the control room. Miss Song, having collected samples from the bodies, found that Su Chan's death mirrored the others. Dr. Hong discovered that water had seeped from within Su Chan's organs, filling his entire body without any signs of infection. The origin of all this water baffled everyone. At that moment, Dr. Hong made a startling discovery. The liquid extracted from Su Chan separated into two distinct substances, the nature of which remained unknown. They had been unable to contact Earth. An engineer found the communication tower's data processor malfunctioning, so someone had to go outside the base to replace the device, while the engineer updated protocols in the control room. The base's elevator was already out of order, and no one was willing to take risks in these situations. Left with no other choice, Captain Han decided to undertake the task himself. Before departing, Miss Song approached him, suggesting that the creature didn't intend to harm her, and it attacked Li Gi because he had invaded its territory. It could navigate swiftly through the vents, indicating its intimate familiarity with the base's layout. It might be a survivor who had lived on the base's resources for five years. However, Captain Han dismissed her theory. He and two other members arrived at the elevator shaft, which reminded him of his daughter on Earth, already suffering from a virus that could only be treated with higher quality water. His motivation for joining the mission. The repair was perilously dangerous. He had to descend a hundred meters to the base of the shaft using only a rope. The faulty elevator suddenly activated and hurtled toward him during the descent, but Captain Han dodged it just in time. However, seconds later, the elevator broke off and fell from above. In a life or death moment, Captain Han clung to the rope and leapt to safety, depleting much of his oxygen in the process. Upon reaching the malfunctioning section, his oxygen was critically low, and he had less than a minute to return to the chamber to replenish it. Despite warnings from his team, Captain Han stubbornly continued the repair and completed the task, but he passed out from lack of oxygen. Fortunately, his teammates arrived in time to rescue him from the brink. The communication system was restored, yet they couldn't establish contact with Earth. At that moment, the system detected an unknown signal originating from outside the base, pinpointing its reception at Storage Room 3, where Li Gi had died. The team hurried to investigate but found nothing unusual except a communicator on Li Ji. It turned out Li Ji had been working for a mysterious organization, and the outdated communicator was a model commonly used by RX Company. Captain Han immediately asked an engineer to use the communicator to try contacting Director Choi, and soon they established a connection. Captain Han revealed Li Ji's identity as a spy a co-pilot role approved by Director Choi herself. Captain Han suspected a connection between Director Choi and Li Gi, but Director Choi denied knowing Li Ji's true identity. She remained surprisingly calm upon hearing about a survivor, almost as if she already knew. Captain Han pressed for the truth, but Director Choi vehemently denied knowing the situation inside the base or believing in the existence of survivors. She emphasized the importance of preventing the sample from being stolen over retrieving it, citing Captain Han's daughter's condition as a reminder of the stakes involved. After the call, Captain Han relayed to the team that the rescue ship had been delayed. Finding the sample became their top priority, but some team members were skeptical, suspecting Director Choi of deliberately delaying the rescue to manipulate them into continuing her bidding. Meanwhile, Miss Song suddenly had a realization. She pricked her finger, and her blood mixed with the sample which then began to divide and multiply. This was what had killed Su Chan. The sample would continue growing until its host ceased breathing. 
Confronting Captain Han in the control room, Miss Song demanded to know if he had been aware of the true nature of the sample all along. Reluctantly, he shared the truth with everyone, that they had discovered lunar water on the moon, believed to save humanity if brought back to Earth, and Miss Song's sister was the first to find it. Miss Song then spoke privately with the captain about their next steps. The lunar water harbored many secrets, and the space agency had hidden its endlessly replicating nature, the reason behind the disaster at Bohai Base five years ago. They urgently needed to access the Level 1 database for more information about the lunar water. Using the Level 1 code provided by Director Choi, they opened a massive database, and Captain Hang accidentally stepped on a plant. There is a switch for entering a secret chamber. They discovered a dense thicket of greenery when they opened the secret chamber. Miss Song remembered a cryptic email from her sister five years ago, hinting at a location called Luna. Mr. Huang mentioned that it was the code name for Bohai Base's database. The area beneath the database was filled with lush vegetation, shocking everyone. On closer inspection, they discovered a storage room containing samples of lunar water. A broken vial on the ground had nourished the extensive greenery, proving the water's potent energy. They could save the planet by bringing the samples back to Earth and harnessing lunar water correctly. Captain Han felt that they were being watched during the sample collection. Suddenly, a very fast little girl attacked one of the team members, ripping off his arm with lightning speed. In a panic, a team member named Fatso shot the girl, breaking the lunar water sample, but she managed to escape. As the lunar water quickly proliferated, the team was forced to retreat rapidly with the samples. Amidst the chaos, one team member died, and another was severely injured and unconscious. Using her knowledge of animal behavior, Miss Song deduced that the little girl was protecting the lunar water from theft. Captain Han re-established communication with Director Choi, who finally breathed a sigh of relief upon learning the team had secured the lunar water. Director Choi promised immediate dispatch of spacecraft to take them, but insisted that even if it meant killing the little girl, the lunar water must be kept. Captain Han suspected the girl was a survivor, but Director Choi denied it. After the communication ended, a photo appeared on Director Choi's side, showing her posing with the little girl, hinting at deeper secrets. Captain Han prepared to capture the little girl. Miss Song, however, requested to return to the database to gather detailed research on lunar water to uncover the hidden truths. Reluctantly, Captain Han agreed to let Dr. Hong accompany her. At the database, they found that all data on lunar water had been intentionally erased. Meanwhile, the engineer revealed his true identity as a spy for RX Company. Besides retrieving the lunar water, his mission was eliminating the team members. When he tried to take the lunar water, he was caught by Dr. Hong and Miss Song. He lied, claiming he was moving the lunar water to the control room for safety. Miss Song sensed something was off, as Captain Han hadn't ordered the relocation of the lunar water, and she was in charge of all sample-related matters. As the engineer was about to be exposed, he prepared to kill them. Just then, the little girl appeared at the door. Miss Song immediately alerted Captain Han and signaled them to stay calm, attempting to gain the little girl's trust. She slowly placed the lunar water on the table, and the girl remained surprisingly calm. At that moment, Miss Song noticed the name tag on the girl. It was her sister's name. As the girl reached for the sample, the engineer fired, shattering it. Oddly, the lunar water didn't mutate on the girl, but quickly healed her wounds. Before anyone could react, she escaped through the ventilation shaft. Later, Captain Han questioned why Miss Song risked approaching the girl. Miss Song explained that she just wanted the girl to understand that she meant no harm, and asked everyone not to hurt her. Since her body adapted to lunar water, she could hold the key to unlocking its secrets, potentially offering hope for all humanity. Later, Captain Han used a secure channel to contact Mr. Kim, seeking more information about Bohai Base. Mr. Kim suggested that Han and Miss Song discuss it, as the answers he sought were from her. Miss Song believed her sister had deleted the lunar water data, possibly to prevent further casualties. With the little girl showing interest in lunar water, 
Captain Han decided to use a sample to lure and capture her. Meanwhile, the engineer communicated with RX Company, adding the girl to the deal and taking the lunar water sample. However, an injured team member overheard the engineer's plot. As he prepared to inform Captain Han, the engineer returned unexpectedly and fatally shot him. Han and Miss Song successfully used lunar water to capture the girl, trapping her leg under a gate. Miss Song, unable to bear seeing her suffer, embraced her. Suddenly, Miss Song noticed a tag labeled Luna 073 on the girl's neck, but Captain Han took the opportunity to sedate her. Elsewhere, Dr. Hong discovered the lunar water sample was missing and found a teammate's body in a cold storage. She immediately informed Captain Han, and at that moment, the engineer entered the control room, locking all passages and causing chaos inside the base. Luna overcame the sedative and escaped. The gate trapped Miss Song inside. She ignored Captain Han's warnings and followed Luna alone to a room that seemed to be Luna's living quarters. Looking out the window, she could see Earth. She found Luna trembling in a cabinet and successfully gained Luna's trust using her animal behavior skills. This place was once her sister's dormitory. Miss Song then discovered a hard drive, revealing that her sister was the developer of Lunar Water. Initially tested on animals, experiments were conducted on clones under pressure from superiors. Luna was the only clone, numbered 73, who adapted to Lunar Water essentially a genetic clone of Miss Song's sister. As team members continued to die, Captain Han suspected the engineer was responsible. He checked the situation and asked Lao Ge to keep searching for Miss Song and Luna. On his way back to the control room, Captain Han encountered Dr. Hong. They discovered a warehouse storing clones, leaving them horrified. Meanwhile, Fatso, back at the control room, was ambushed by the engineer and shot several times. Fatso threatened the engineer with a vial of lunar water, but the engineer, blinded by rage, shot again. The vial fell and broke, and as the lunar water touched Fatso, the engineer locked the door, trapping him inside. Soon, Fatso's mouth emitted a large amount of water. The engineer then opened the lunar water storage, which flooded the base. At the same time, Captain Han and Dr. Hong returned to the control room, only to find Fatso dead. Captain Han reset the base's gates, instructing Dr. Hong to wait in the lab while he pursued the engineer. Meanwhile, as the engineer carried the lunar water around searching for Luna, Lao Ge found Miss Song and Luna. Luna was about to act, but Miss Song shielded Lao Ge. At the same time, Captain Han notified Lao Ge that the engineer was heading their way and ordered him not to shoot Luna. He immediately instructed the trio to head to the lab to meet Dr. Hong. By the time the engineer arrived, they had vanished, and instead, Captain Han caught him. After a brief struggle, the captain subdued the engineer, who cryptically replied when questioned about his actions. You have no idea what's happened here. During this exchange, a distraction from the communicator allowed the engineer to ambush Captain Han, and both drew their guns, leading to a standoff. Just then, lunar water seeped from the pipe gaps, forming a water wall, and the engineer fled. Meanwhile, the lunar water leaked into the base's exterior through the ventilation system and instantly froze due to the cold. During her escape, Miss Song accidentally let lunar water touch her face. Once in the lab, she revealed the secrets of Bohai Base to the others. The base had been shut down years ago to prevent information leaks and avoid international condemnation. Dr. Hong panicked, realizing they might be silenced even if they returned to Earth alive. Director Choi chose Miss Song because her sister was the lead researcher of the Lunar Water Project, and to protect her sister's reputation, Miss Song was unlikely to reveal the truth, even if she had discovered it. Just then, Captain Han returned to the lab and ordered an immediate evacuation as massive amounts of lunar water were about to emerge. Miss Song's body began to mutate, and her vision blurred as she realized she was infected by lunar water. Thinking of her comrades, Miss Song quickly isolated herself, beginning to vomit water and losing consciousness. But in a twist, she survived. Luna had bitten her, possibly saving her life with her mutated genes. They contacted Mr. Kim, 
who informed them that the rescue ship was entering orbit. At the same time, they detected another ship, likely from RX Company, coming to extract the engineer. Miss Song asked Mr. Kim what would happen if Luna were brought back to Earth. He explained she would be confined to a lab to repeat the Bohai base experiments. Miss Song felt that this was too risky and could endanger Earth, turning Luna into a mere research tool. She decided against returning to Earth, planning to take Luna to a neutral international space research facility where Luna and Lunar Water wouldn't belong to any country. But Captain Han wanted to bring back Lunar Water to save his daughter. As a father, he felt he had no choice. Just then, Luna heard the Lunar Water approaching, and they all had to follow her to escape quickly. At that moment, they encountered the engineer. Infected by Lunar Water, he became delirious and revealed the truth about the disaster five years ago during the Lunar Water Leak. He was one of the mercenaries sent not to rescue, but to silence. The government never intended to save anyone, as lunar water surged towards them. Lao Ge shot in defense, knocking down the engineer but also getting shot himself, ultimately dying. Due to a system failure, someone had to close the gates manually, or no one could leave alive. Captain Han chose to sacrifice himself. He was a devoted father and a competent captain of his team. Ultimately, Luna, Miss Song, and Dr. Hong escaped the base, but Luna stepped out of her spacesuit, walking barefoot on the moon. She had adapted not only to lunar water, but also to the lunar environment. She walked up to Captain Han and handed him the badge Captain Han sent her previously. In his final moments, he looked at a sticker his daughter had given him, and with a tear, he closed his eyes. Meanwhile, the rescue ship arrived. This concludes the first season of The Silent Sea. Thanks for watching our recap. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our exciting movie journeys. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments and join us next time.